views on salvation, and uh, and there's just a lot of confusion about it. Just out of curiosity, I just wonder tonight how many of you in this room have ever doubted your salvation, and I'm raising my hand. That's almost all of us. Satan wants us to doubt our salvation. <coughs> As long as we're doubting our salvation, we can't move forward in our Christian lives. And uh, one of the reasons I believe that Christians struggle with their salvation is, is because of what's coming from behind a lot of the pulpits in churches today. I want to ask you a question tonight, and I don't want you to answer, but I want you to think of the answer in your head. The question is, I want to ask you, what do I have to do to be saved? <clears throat> if I were to come to you and ask you, a lost sinner, what do I have to do to be saved? What would you tell me? Just think about it. Now, if we went around the room and everybody gave their answer, we would probably get as many as are in here different answers tonight. And it would all probably point to the same basic idea, but it would all be worded in everybody's own way, and, uh, and, and it all be different. Um, but there's only one answer. What must I do to be saved? There's only one answer. Now, if I were to go around the room and, and ask everyone to answer individually, you'd probably get uh, answers like, well, you need to ask Jesus into your heart. And that's a phrase, that's a term that we probably heard in the churches all our lives. But let me ask you a question. Can you look in this book anywhere and back that up with the, with the, with the Bible? Asking Jesus to come into your heart, is that found anywhere in the scriptures? You look in vain. It's not there. Uh, uh, you, may, you may hear an answer, well, you need to pray to receive Christ. Well, what exactly does that mean? I need to pray a prayer to be saved. Is, is praying a requirement for salvation? Uh, there's a doctrine that's uh, just penetrating the churches like wildfire uh, today. It's called Lordship Salvation. And the truth of the matter is it's just heresy. And that's the teaching that you have to receive Jesus not only as your Savior but as your Lord to be saved. And that's just wrong. Jesus did not... Uh, the, the requirements for salvation is not make Jesus the Lord of your life. That's uh, sanctification, which we'll be getting into in a couple weeks. To be sanctified, to grow in Christ, we need to start surrendering our lives to His Lordship. But to be saved, you do not have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And if you go around the churches today and talk to different pastors today, you're going, and I'm talking Baptist ministers, I'm, you will find that over and over again, the concept of lordship salvation. And the truth of the matter is that is a work salvation. If I told you I had a free gift and I wanted to give it to you, and it was uh, free and I paid for it, and you don't have to pay a thing for it, but I said, oh, but by the way, you have to serve me and make me your lord and master to receive it. Is it free or is it conditional? That's conditional. One, uh, take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> There's one place in the Bible that the question, what must I do to be saved, and the answer is found together. Now the Bible deals with salvation all the way throughout it, but there's just one place in the Bible where the question and the answer is found. And I want you to think back to the to the answer that you had in your mind just a few minutes ago and compare it to the answer that's in the Bible and see if there's a difference. And I don't mean to be harsh or disrespectful or, or, or mean, but if there's a difference between your answer and the answer we find in the Bible, guess who's wrong? 
you know this story, the Philippian jailer, in verse 30, he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There it is. There's the answer. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Oh, Philip, you don't believe in that easy believism, do you? Absolutely. Paul did. Jesus did. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I, now, I don't believe in these preachers that are going around, pray this prayer and you'll be saved. I don't believe in that. But the truth of the matter is, if an unsaved individual believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, he passes from death unto life. So where do we get, uh, where do we get the asking Jesus into your heart, making Jesus the Lord of your life, praying to receive Christ? Where do we get all these ideas that all these things, they repent of your sins. There's one. That's one that you get. Get a. Uh, an, you have to repent of your sins to be saved. Well, let me ask you a question: Have you repented of every cotton picking sin that's in your life? If we all got real honest, we'd all probably have to say, "No, we're still working on a few." How many sins do you have to repent? All those, where do we get all these? If it's so simple, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, where do we get all these other things? And that's what I hope that this study, this six weeks, I hope that maybe we'll start to see uh, uh, the truth behind just how simple salvation is and yet just how complex it is. Now, I want to ask you a question, and I, I want you to, uh, to think... If I were to ask you to go look in my trunk and bring me the contents that are in it, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? If you, somebody can speak up. What's that? A tire. A tire? In your car trunk. In the car trunk? Uh-huh. Would be a spare tire. Well, what if I meant that uh, I had this box up in my attic and I wanted you to go bring me something that was out of it? Get something. You would save from your childhood some of your tires. Maybe. Okay, what if I, I, I meant that I've got a pet elephant and it's got a messy <laughs> nose and I want you to clean it out for me? I tell you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, if I say go look in my trunk, how do you know what I'm talking about? Depends on the context. Context. Now, when we read salvation, when we read about salvation in the Bible, what does salvation or the word saved or saved, what does that mean? Does it mean necessarily go to heaven when you die or escape the, the, the flames of hell? What does the word saved mean? Outside of the context of Christianity, what's, what's it mean? What does salvation mean? Deliverance. Rescue. What we do in, with, with our paradigm, see, you thought automatically I meant the back of my car because, of, because you just thought you, you had a preconceived idea in your mind. I meant go look in the back of the car and you know, help me get a tire out. You, you didn't know what I was talking about, but you automatically assumed. But I won't be out trying anything. <laughs> and that's what, we do, that's what we do with the scriptures. We see a word in the Bible and we use our preconceived ideas. We use our paradigms and we try to fit our doctrine. We try to make the scriptures fit what we believe. And it confuses us. It, it, it just brings confusion. I want, to look at, uh, I want to look at salvation past, present, and future. First of all, the past. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. This should be a familiar verse to everyone. 